Hello. Uh, so in, we only have one video today uh, because I, I think this is going to be a long one. It's a, it's a longer worksheet. Um, but today we're going to talk about boarding theory um, and a really surprising result uh, called uh, Errol's paradox or sometimes called Errol's impossibility theorem. So uh, it's really cool stuff. Let's jump right to it. Okay, so this is a, a, a timely topic because 2020 is a presidential election year. Uh, and on every election year, um, presidential election year, there's a debate between uh, electoral college system, uh, which is what the US uh, uses uh, for presidential election versus uh, popular vote. Um, I, I don't wanna get I don't, uh, I don't want to get too detailed into the, that topic, um, but generally what's happening uh, is that electoral college system is kind of a balance between uh, the popular vote versus uh, paying attention to smaller states. So, um, so one um, positive for ele electoral college system would be that um, if it was purely popular vote, uh, then uh, there's a fear that uh, presidential candidates will not visit smaller states, which are re less populous. They'll only visit uh, like big city centers like New York uh, or LA or Seattle and only listen to uh, people in, in, those, um, in those cities uh, and spend much less time on, on states that uh, do not have as many people. Uh, so it kind of balances out um, each state's uh, power by uh, like not only the, the, the electoral votes that each, each state gets, it's based on population as well, but also um, it's, Proportionally speaking, smaller states, um, they do get less votes, but still relatively larger compared to uh, states that are more uh, populous. So uh, it is kind of a way to protect smaller states, um, but uh, you can kind of uh, see the, the complaint that might come from uh, the, the larger states as well, because now their votes are more diluted. Um, so uh, for example, if, if you live in a state that, that is kind of locked in for Republicans or locked in for Democrats, then uh, your, your voting power is, is much smaller because uh, your vote probably are not gonna change the outcome of the state. Um, and then uh, even in, like uh, states that are uh, s smaller, uh, like uh, if, if it's a toss up, um, if it's nearly 50% Democrats and 50% uh, Republicans, then their votes are uh, amplified. Uh, so their vote counts much more than um, uh, people from other states. So it kind of seems unbalanced that different people have different uh, powers on their voting. Um, so uh, there are a lot of uh, people on states who, who want to decide presidential election with a popular vote. And uh, there's a movement called um, National Popular Vote Interstate Compact, which basically says that um, these states, all the electoral votes will go towards the national popular vote. So just ignore the electoral college system and um, just everybody, all of the states uh, will put all their electoral votes along with the national vote. Um, they are getting closer and closer to uh, how many electoral votes necessary for this compact to come into play. Um, but uh, that's, that's another issue. So um, I don't want to be 
like uh, political on this video. Uh, what I want to talk about is, is there like a mathematical reason why you might prefer one uh, type of election system over the other? Uh, and a lot of work has been done in that direction. So uh, what I want to do is talk about that. Uh, and then you can make some, some more informed decisions. On, you can make up your own mind uh, about what kind of election system uh, does what you, what you uh, hope it accomplishes. Okay, so uh, let's, let's define an election. So uh, election system is going to be a method uh, of taking in a preference from each of the voters uh, and to decide on the preference for the entire society as a whole. Um, so um, to do an example, uh, it's, it's much easier to describe an election system with an example. So we'll do one. Let's say we have, um, we, we would like to elect, uh, what, what's the, our favorite movie TV series um, between Game of Thrones, uh, Harry Potter, uh, and Star Wars. These, these three uh, TV and movie shows that a lot of people like. Um, and what, so each person is asked uh, to not just pick their like number one favorite, but kind of rank among these three candidates. So uh, an example of a vote might look like uh, I would like to say Game of Thrones is my most favorite, and then Harry Potter is my second favorite, and Star Wars is uh, third place compared to the other, other two franchises. Um, and you'll uh, turn in a preference, something that looks like this. So here I'm using greater than symbol uh, to say the thing on the left is more preferred over the thing on the, on the right. Um, but it, it doesn't actually mean the greater than as, as far as regular number uh, comparison goes. Um, so um, each person will write in their preference. They have to completely rank it. They can, no ties allowed. Um, and then you, you put in your vote, right? So the result of a vote might look like this. So this, this is what's called a preference schedule. It's like a table of how many people voted which way. So if you have this election uh, with uh, three candidates, um, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, and Star Wars, then there's six different ways you can vote, right? So there's three choices for um, the first place. So these two types are putting Game of Thrones at the top, these two put Harry Potter at the top, and these two take Star Wars at the top. And once you pick your first place, there's two other franchises that you can kind of order whichever way. So it could be Harry Potter over Star Wars or Star Wars about Harry Potter. So, um, so there's a total of six different ways um, you could uh, order this, um, possibly. And uh, let's say uh, 10 people voted in this preference order. Uh, no people voted in this preference order, um, and so on. Okay, so there's a total of 29 people who voted. Okay, so people voted in different ways. How do we decide who wins the election? <clears throat> so I, what I will do is introduce four different types of election systems. One that's the most uh, popularly used is called uh, plurality. Um, and it's to ignore all the second and third choices, just look at the most first place choices that's made. So um, for example, um, for this, uh, 10 people voted um, Game of Thrones at the first place. So Game of Thrones gets 10 points. Uh, eight people voted uh, Harry Potter at the first place. So uh, Harry Potter gets eight points. And uh, 11 people voted Star Wars 
in the first place. Um, so they get 11 points and uh, Star Wars get the most number one uh, votes. So they win. Um, so Star Wars wins. Just look for the most popular first first choice. So that's that's what you do. Vote plurality. So that's one uh, election system. Uh, you might wonder, like, how else would you decide? Well, um, you could try to elect somebody that people hate the least. Uh, so, uh, for example, um, what you do is uh, you do it in stages. So in instant runoff, what you'll do is you'll count uh, who, who has the least first place vote. So I'm gonna reuse the results from earlier. Okay. So out of Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, and Star Wars, it looks like Harry Potter is the least uh, popular first place. Okay. <clears throat> so um, Harry Potter is eliminated um, from the running. And what we do is after they get eliminated, you look at the second place of people who voted that way. So in this case, uh, people who voted for Harry Potter liked Game of Thrones as a second place better than Star Wars. No people voted this way, but eight people voted this way. So after Harry Potter is eliminated, uh, these eight votes go towards Game of Thrones. So now Game of Thrones gets uh, 18 points because uh, the Harry Potter votes go to uh, Game of Thrones and Star Wars um, still has 11 points. So this is the second stage. Okay. Then now again, you'll eliminate the least popular. So now Star Wars is the least popular among the two. Um, and then there's only one um, candidate that's left. So here, Game of Thrones win. Okay, so uh, just to be a little bit more clear, this is uh, because all eight of them preferred Game of Thrones uh, above Star Wars among the people who voted. Um, Harry Potter, if this was, uh, for example, 7-1 split, uh, it would have been uh, 17 for Game of Thrones and uh, 12 for Star Wars. So um, you, you'd split uh, as they voted. It just, the votes go to the second place, basically, um, and so on. Okay, so I hope that made sense. So that is, instant runoff, you eliminate the least favorite one at each step. Okay, uh, let's look at the board, board account. So board account kind of takes an account uh, of all of the, the first, second, and third choices. So different gradation of uh, votes that each candidate received. And um, you give the most points to the first place uh, and then one less points for the second place, and so on until um, the last place gets zero points, right? And then you total the score. So uh, what happens here, uh, let's, let's compute it. So Game of Thrones uh, gets 10 votes for the first place. So, and they get two points each for first place votes. And uh, I'm looking at this, and Game of Thrones uh, gets 12 votes as second place. Okay, so 12 times one, and they get uh, zero points for third place. So, oops. Uh, so you don't have to count those. <clears throat> okay, so that's 20 plus 12, so 30. 
two points, okay. Uh, let's now compute how many points that um, Harry Potter gets. So Harry Potter gets uh, eight first place votes. And let's see, uh, 17 second place votes. Okay, so 16 plus 17. Uh, is 33 points. Okay, so Harry Potter gets 33 points in board account. And Star Wars uh, gets 11 first place votes, so they get two points for each of those. And Star Wars gets zero second place votes. So they only get 22 points. <clears throat> So um, as far as the board accounts goes, uh, Harry Potter wins the most. I hope that made sense. Um, so they get two points for the first place and one point for the second place uh, for three candidate system. If this was a system with four candidates, uh, the first place would get three points Second place will get two points, third place will get one point, and fourth place get zero points, and so on. So um, the number of first place votes depends on how many people are running. Okay. So let me erase these. And we'll look at the fourth uh, election system, which is called the pairwise comparison. So pairwise comparison is uh, you look at the most wins in one-to-one -one comparison. So what does that mean? So there's uh, three candidates and three one-to-one -one matchups you could do. So you could do Game of Thrones versus Harry Potter. There's Game of Thrones versus Star Wars. And then there's Harry Potter versus uh, Star Wars. So these are three head-to-head -head matches that you could um, look at. And you count all of the uh, votes that put G above H for this. So let's see. So these three types of votes has G that's preferred over H. Uh, ignoring the S that appears on the on this uh, preference. So uh, there's 10 people who voted uh, this way, zero people who voted this way, and four people who voted this way. So G gets 14 points versus um, the other three prefer uh, Harry Potter above Game of Thrones. So there's uh, eight plus seven, so 15 prefers um, Harry Potter. So Harry Potter wins this one. Okay. And we do the same thing with uh, Game of Thrones versus Star Wars. So let's see. Uh, these three has uh, Game of Thrones above Star Wars and there's 18 versus 11 for this, so Game of Thrones wins that one. And now we look at uh, Harry Potter versus Star Wars. So these three has H that's uh, preferred over Star Wars. So that's 18 uh, versus um, 11. So Harry Potter wins that one as well. So, uh, so what happens with these head-to-head -head matches is that you get one point for winning head-to-head -head matches and half a point if it's exact tie. So in this case, um, Harry Potter won twice, Game of Thrones won once, and Star Wars won nothing. So Harry Potter wins this one as well.
Okay. <clears throat> Uh, one drawback of pairwise comparison is that it's very easy to get a situation where it's kind of rock, paper, scissors type of thing where Game of Thrones wins once, Harry Potter wins once, and Star Wars win once. And if they all tie, so if they all win once, that would be tie overall. So it, it is uh, fairly um, probable that that could happen. In this case, it didn't. So it did... Uh, come up with a result. Um, okay, so I hope um, these four election systems made sense. Uh, what I want you to try is uh, open up our worksheet uh, and I provided um, uh, election schedule, a uh, preference schedule for you. So. Uh, just to kind of test your understanding of how these four different um, election systems go, uh, please pause the video and see if you can compute who wins uh, on each of these uh, systems. Okay. So one thing that you might wonder, um, is that, well, like Harry Potter won toy, two of the systems over the other uh, two franchises, so maybe that, that was the best. Um, but it's actually possible that none of these uh, election systems agree. So um, here's an example. So it's a little bit more involved problem uh, because he has four candidates. But with this um, election schedule, um, it's actually possible for the four different uh, election system to result in four different winners. Um, and uh, because there's a lot of different orderings you could do, um, I think there's like 24 different ways you can vote uh, for four candidates. So uh, I didn't list all of the possible rankings. I just listed some and you can assume all of the other possible rankings are zero votes and see if you can um, work out uh, which is the winner for uh, each of the four uh, election systems. So um, this might take a little bit more time, but uh, I hope you try it. Um, then after that, let's go back to the notes. Uh, I'd like to introduce um, Arrow's uh, impossibility theorem or Arrow's paradox. Okay, so um, what uh, so what I want to say about Arrow's impossibility theorem? So the first thing I want to say is uh, what is this Arrow about? It seems unrelated to election. Uh, arrow is not the born Arrow. Arrow. Um, Arrow is actually somebody's last name. So Kenneth Arrow is uh, what this theorem is named after because he, he proved it. Um, he's an economist slash mathematician. Um, he has won the, the Nobel Prize for economics uh, for this work and other stuff as well. But uh, let's focus on this um, impossibility theorem. <clears throat> so he asked the question, okay, so what do you what is the minimum thing that you want uh for a fair election um so he started listing some like uh, obvious criterion that he would want like um you don't want it to be uh a dictatorship you don't want one person deciding for all of the society uh also if uh every voter prefers one candidate over the other then that candidate should win that should be an obvious one uh, one, um, another criterion that seems pretty reasonable um, is like a, introducing another candidate or removing a candidate should not um, switch the order of other candidates. Um, so this makes sense because um, uh, th there sometimes is a case where 
election occurs uh, and the winner of the election should take an office at a, at a later date. In between the election and the, the, the time where the, the winner takes the office, some, sometimes uh, the candidate has to drop out. Uh, maybe the candidate has died um, or uh, something else happens. Um, it would be weird if, if candidate dropping out switched the order or the preference between the, the next runner up and the, the third runner up. If the, the first place candidate drops out and the third candidate suddenly becomes the first candidate, um, if you recompute the, the winner, that, that is a weird election system. You, you probably don't want that. Um, also, um, you don't want a situation where uh, it's a close race between two candidates and then a third candidate joins the race and steals away a lot of votes from the first place candidate. Uh, and then now the, the less popular candidate is now the most popular because, uh, because of the splitting of the votes, right? So uh, joining and removing candidate um, shouldn't change the order of the rest. Um, so if you require these things for a fair election, it turns out that it's actually impossible uh, to have an election system that satisfies all those things. Um, and um, there are like a reasonable criterion, right? Like you don't want people, um, you don't want the election to change because some, uh, the candidate dies, or you don't want a situation where um, like you want this particular candidate to win, uh, but because of the, the quirk of the election system, you, you would benefit from lying about your preference to get try to manipulate the voting system so that your candidate does better. Um, and that's the that's type of situation that's created uh, if you don't accept these criteria. Um, so it, it turns out that it's impossible. So what I'm saying is not to give up on voting uh, or um, just that it's, it's never gonna be fair. So you should just accept um, uh, what happens in an election. Um, what I want to challenge you with uh, is that well, we should stop spending effort to look for something that's actually mathematically impossible. Uh, we should look at like what is the the most fair. So uh, what what Arrow asked for was impossible, um, but can you relax those conditions so that it is actually possible? Um, and you'd be It'd be great if you could come up with math that would uh, support your position. So what has been said in the past? Um, so there were big fights between different types of election systems. So uh, in, in, uh, in 1700, so in 18th uh, century, um, there were some French uh, mathematicians who fought over uh, one who was a champion for pairwise comparison election system. And the other one uh, was for the board account. Um, in much more recent times, um, in, in within this century, um, the, the newer hot topic fight is between um, uh, approval boarding versus um, board account. So I haven't said much about I haven't said anything about approval voting, so uh, you're probably wondering what, what that is. Uh, let me uh, show you what that is. So approval voting um, is kind of like uh, choosing thumbs up or th thumbs down for each of the candidates. So you could say like, yes, I approve this candidate or no, I do not approve this candidate or um, you could, you don't have to pick one uh, or you don't have to come up with like strict ordering of all the candidates. You just have to say this group of candidates 
I don't mind being elected, and these candidates I don't want to win. Um, so you just split thumbs up, thumbs down for each candidate. And you just count the total of the number of approvals. So um, this isn't actually an election um, in the same definition that we worked with in this voting theory, but it's certainly um, uh, like uh, worth looking at um, because there's a lot of pros. Um, so um, one uh, nice thing about this is that it forces two candidate behavior. Um, you like uh, you say yes, I like this candidate. No, I don't like this candidate. Um, and then there's no. I'm just gonna push this candidate so that the other candidate does better uh, or worse. Um, so there's no um, uh, strategic voting as in like uh, voters being dishonest just so that uh, they're trying to manipulate the game. So, so that's taken out, which is nice. Um, another nice thing is that it's very easy to compute uh, the result of the election. It's very transparent and easy to follow. Um, and also, prob this is probably the biggest bit, is that the current voting machines could actually handle this type of election already, um, opposed to uh, board account. Uh, that it's 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 not possible with the the same um, software that's out there today. Um, so it's more realistic of implementation. <clears throat> Uh, the Sari, he's a mathematician, so um, he's, he's championing a board account, uh, and he has a lot of mathematical results kind of supporting why, uh, why he thinks board account is the best. Um, so I, I talked about relaxing the fairness condition, and um, he has an answer for that. So if you cancel out the Thai spirals, well, like situation where uh, there's like a rock, paper, scissors type of uh, people preferring A over B over C or um, A over C or B. So if you kind of cancel out those tie spirals, if you take those votes out, um, then it becomes fair election after that. Um, so that seems to be like closest to what we call fair um, in, in a certain sense. Um, and uh, other reasons that, that he might prefer this is because uh, he can compare uh, this type of voting to certain results in um, uh, algebraic voting theory, which is out of scope for this class, but it, it's a mathematics uh, that has related to that is related to certain type of geometric conditions um, in this space of voting possibilities. Um, so that's that's kind of nice, um, but maybe maybe math being nice is not uh, relevant to whether it's practical uh, because um, requiring each of the uh, voters to fully rank all of the candidates. Uh, which might be too much to ask for our voters. Um, so we have a hard enough time getting people to vote uh, already and, and requiring them to do a lot of homework to learn all of, our, all of the candidates, fully rank and then submit might be too much to um, actually make happen. Okay, so um, these are some of the, the things that are being discussed right now. Um, I'm not pushing one point of view over the other. Uh, you could have your own own thoughts about it, but I, um, at the very least, uh, I kind of, sorry, I kind of wanted you to know about Errol's impossibility theorem, this Errol's paradox of um, requiring certain fairness conditions for voting which seems reasonable um, is actually impossible. Um, so I think that's that's good to know. Okay. Um, so 
I just kind of skimmed the surface of this, this topic. Um, there are other considerations we could have as well. So one thing that we didn't discuss at all is kind of range voting. So uh, what if you do a star system like IMDB or Amazon? So out of five stars or 10 stars uh, have each voter like uh, submit a score of like in a range of uh, possible values this is how much I like this candidate and so on. So that's one possibility of something we could do. Um, and then there's another like a statistical result that you could do, um, what's called measure of a Bayesian regret is trying to minimize uh, between what's the optimal result that you could have at the, at the election versus what's expected result. So average versus the best result. Um, and you're trying to minimize the difference between the two. So you're trying to minimize the regret the voter might have. Um, so that's, that's totally a different uh, way of looking at the same situation. And um, we're not touching that for this class, um, but I just wanted to mention that there are other ways of looking at the same problem as well. Um, okay. So what I want you to do um, is to go back to this worksheet um, and then um, finish, the, finish the worksheet. So there's a little bit more um, precisely stated uh, Errol's paradox here. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's it. So, um, we are kind of getting closer to the end of the statistics unit already. Um, so we have one more worksheet after this uh, on, on Friday, and then we'll review uh, uh, this unit and we'll have another quiz on uh, Friday in the following week. Um, so I guess I'll see you on Friday. <laughs>